All right, so this is part two of a two-part series in deriving the C3H character table. And in part one, what we did is we got this far. We have a nice looking character table, but we're violating um, one of the key rules of the character table, which states that the number of columns or classes of the character table, in this case six, has to equal the number of rows or irreducible representations. And there was this case four. We're also violating a rule where one squared plus one squared plus two squared plus two squared doesn't equal the order of the point group, total number of symmetry operations in the point group, which is six. So um, to solve this, we have to uh, break up the E prime and E vectors um, or irreducible representations as they're also called into two components. And um, so one plus one is gonna equal two. And then we're gonna have other solutions here where this plus this equals negative one, this plus this equals negative one. Those solutions are gonna a lot of times contain complex numbers. And there's complex functions that transform as these vectors. But when we break E prime like this, and we're also gonna break up E double prime in a similar way, then you know we're no longer gonna have this two, we're no longer gonna have this two, uh, or any of these. So we're gonna, I can just go ahead and um, cross this, this guy out. I'm gonna keep E double prime uncrossed because for now we'll, we'll work on it. Um, but anyway, we're gonna have one square plus 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 one square equals six. And now look, we have one, two, three, four, five, six irreducible representations matching our six classes. So everything will be good there, but the math gets crazy because we have to deal with um, complex numbers, real and imaginary numbers. So um, there's several different ways to uh, solve these sorts of problems. Um, and the first thing I'm gonna do is just write this a little more compact. So I'm gonna raise this bottom one and write this a little more compact so we have enough room as we go through um, the fairly complicated math. So we know that this is actually gonna get broken up into vectors with one and one, one plus one equals two. Um, <clears throat> so we need to, there's, there's several ways you could do this to figure out these values. Um, the easiest way is to look at the function that it transformed as when it was a, a real part, when it was together x and y, um, and then to uh, use an imaginary kind of relative of that. And so uh, the way that this works is that, you know, a relative of this x and y would be the function x plus i y. Could do, you know, sort of different derivations or different versions that are related to this. Um, you'll get correct answers as well. Um, but I'm just going to use x plus i, y. And then we just do what we normally do when we transform functions, what we did in part one in this series. So we go through and look at the different operations. How does the identity transform x plus y? Well, x plus y goes to x plus, uh, x plus i, y. x plus i, y goes to x plus i, y. How does the next one, c3, transform x plus i, y? Well, we have to think about how X transforms. And um, just as a review, right, we had to use the rotation matrix for this. So we had cosine two pi over three for 120 degree rotation minus sine two pi over three. Um, we have cosine on this element, part matrix element and sine on this matrix element. And this was all times by x, y. And so what that tells us is that x plus y, the x component, um, is going as hmm, cosine 2 pi over 3 times x minus uh, sine 2 pi over 3 times y, right? Just multiplying this out. And then we have the plus i component, i, y component. So um, we just do plus sine two pi over three, and I'll stick an i here, i y plus i cosine two pi over three. 
water. Um, and so that's what X plus I, Y goes to when we do a C3 operation. If you look at this, um, this is actually equal to X plus um, I, Y times cosine two pi over three X plus I sine two pi over three Y. And to convince you of this, let's just multiply this back at home, okay? So X, so foil back out X, um, sorry, no X's here or Y's, just equal to that. Right, so what happens, what I'm saying is X plus I, Y went to this huge thing we figured out. And I'm saying that this huge thing, you can factor out an X plus I, Y with this component here. And so if we do that, um, and we're just checking here, multiply this out, cosine two pi over three times X, that matches this term. Um, and then we have, uh, let's get this term here. So that term actually comes from my I Y times I times sine two pi over three. Remember I is the square root of negative one. So I squared equals negative one. So if we have I squared there, that's gonna become a negative one. So that becomes negative sine two pi over three times y, which is this term. And then we have I sine two pi over three times x. Um, I sine two pi over three times so there's a little mistake here, guys, um, which is, is made here. Uh, when we're multiplying, when we're saying what y is equal to, y transforms a sine two pi over three times x. Okay, and we had a, uh, uh, so it was i y times sine two pi over three times x. So anyway, um, what we're doing now is I sine two pi over three times X. So those terms now match. So that was our little mistake there. Okay, and then our last term is cosine two pi over three times I Y. You can see that gets this term. So we proved that we can factor it out this way, you know, remembering that I equals square root of negative one and I squared equals negative one. That was a trick. And there's now a bigger trick we're going to take advantage of, which is Euler's formula. Euler's formula says that e to the theta i equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. So in this case, um, that means that e to the, we can say e to the 2 pi over 3i equals cosine two pi over three plus I sine two pi over three. And lo and behold, that's what this term is right here that we factored out, it's the same thing. So it's actually, we can simplify this even more, just transforms the C3 uh, operation, just takes the, the, the function, the imaginary function X plus I, Y, transforms it to x plus i y times e to two pi over three i. We have an eigenfunction. It's a one dimensional, and now we could write a matrix, right? Just like we always do. And our matrix would say, hey, x plus i y times e to the two pi over three i equals what well, our transformation. And so then we would take a trace of this matrix, a one by one matrix, and that would be our character. This is such an important term in these sorts of character tables that we are gonna define epsilon to be equal to e to the two pi over three i. And throughout the character table, as we're deriving this, we're gonna try to get things in terms of epsilon. And so our character here, or C3, um, is actually just equal to epsilon with this new definition. So we're gonna call this 
epsilon. Okay, so uh, now next we're gonna do the C3 twice. So what's gonna happen here? We don't have to redo all this math. Instead of having, um, instead of having two pi over threes here, now we're doing two of them. So we're gonna have 240 degree angle instead of a 120 degree angle. So we're gonna have four pi over threes. All this math is gonna be four pi over threes. And in the end, we're gonna get that the character is equal, equal to e four pi over three i. Well, what's e four pi over three i? Hmm. Let's break this back into using Euler's formula. It's cosine four pi over three plus i sine um, four pi over three. Well, cosine four pi over three is the same as cosine two pi over three. They're both uh, negative one half. And so um, we can just replace this with cosine two pi over three, that first term. Now sine pi over three, four pi over three is negative root three over two. Sine two pi over three is positive root three over two. So we can just put their minus one another. We can just rewrite this as minus i sine two pi over three. And this is now looking very similar to uh, epsilon, but the imaginary component um, is negative. And we call that the complex conjugate, taking the complex conjugate of an imaginary number. And we write that with a star notation. So the character here is the same thing, um, except it's the complex conjugate. Oops, I put it in the wrong spot. That's for um, up here. Okay. Now I keep going on. Sigma h. Sigma h is, um, what does that do? Well, we know if we remember what that did from the previous video, sigma h is in the xy plane. This was our z, our x, and our y. This was our principal rotation axis, like C3. Um, and so if we had x or y vector in the xy plane, that did nothing. And so um, that gave us the identity matrix for this one, for x and y but we're not in X and Y anymore. We are in X plus I, Y, but X plus I, Y is just gonna go to X plus I, Y. So our character is gonna be equal of sigma H is gonna be equal to one. So we make this a one. What about S3? Let's think about this. S3 is just equal to, S3 operation is just equal to C3 times sigma H. We just said that sigma H does nothing. So S3 is gonna do the same thing as a C3. So right away, we can just put epsilon. What about the next one, S3 five? Well, that, if you remember, from our last video in the beginning when we derived the symmetry operations is equal to C3 twice times sigma H. Well, sigma H did nothing. So this is gonna do the same thing as C3 twice. And C3 twice was epsilon, it's a complex conjugate of epsilon. We're doing great. Um, I'm gonna move myself down here the last part we have to do is just figure out the bottom part here. We could test another function. It's gonna end up being x minus i, y, but there's a simpler way. What we can do, or x minus i, y is one example that works. What we can do is just use the fact that we know that when we break up these components, they have to equal to the original vector. So one plus one equals two, um, one plus one equals two, where we took apart this e prime, not the e double prime, we gotta do that next. One plus one is gonna equal two. And what 
plus something, I'm gonna call it A, plus epsilon. This one's a little harder to do, right? A plus epsilon is equal to negative one, this character. So A is gonna be equal to negative one minus epsilon. Well, what is epsilon? Remember, it is this, e to the two pi over three i, which is equal to um, cosine two pi over three plus i sine two pi over three. Well, cosine two pi over three, remember, is negative one. Um, and so, sorry, cosine two over pi over three is equal to negative one half, but we are minusing it. So we're gonna get a positive one half, right? Minusing epsilon. And now we have to do this i sine two pi over three. What's that? That is uh, root three over two. So um, this is gonna become a negative root three over two. Well, that just equals negative one half plus <clears throat> one half equals negative one half plus, minus root three over two. And that is equal to the complex conjugate of epsilon. Sorry, this should be times i, right? Because we have the sine times i. Why is that equal to complex conjugate? Well, again, here is um, e. This, this term is negative one half, cosine two pi over three, and sine two pi over three is positive root three over two, and the complex conjugate, you just take the negative of the imaginary component. So this A, we can now put the character complex conjugate. We test what B is here. Again, we get B plus um, complex conjugate. Now we have a new form of B plus complex conjugate equals negative one. And you're gonna get a very similar thing here. B equals negative one minus the complex conjugate. And the same sort of thing's gonna happen, um, but now the answer ends up being actually back to epsilon because um, you're gonna get this negative one minus a negative one half, which gives you a negative one half, but then this is gonna become, this net, what was a negative i term is gonna become a positive i term so I think you can see that at this point, this is gonna be complex conjugate. Very similar thing here, we have something plus epsilon equals negative one. Well, we know now the pattern, this equals uh, epsilon conjugate complex conjugate. And here we have something plus epsilon complex conjugate equals negative one. So we're gonna get epsilon. 